match. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Sportsman. We've got Mikey V back. He's got his stress ball. We've got Joey D. And uh, it's been it's been a big week. We missed Mikey V for week one. Week one uh, updates, getting his picks, getting what he likes, getting his his whole uh, Super Bowl picks, MVPs. We missed all that. Maybe we'll get into that later in the show. But let's just dive right into it, guys. A lot happened. None bigger than Aaron Rodgers getting hurt. Almost immediately, almost after he fucking was done bringing that American flag out, he got hurt. Um, I mean, Joe, if that was your guy. So why don't we start with you, man? How do you feel about that? What's going on? I mean, he doesn't play on my team anymore, but it's it's just you never want to see that happen to anybody. Um, I, I was rooting for Aaron this year. I know that he gave the Packers everything he could for the last seems like eternity. Um, and you know, this was a chance for him to kind of get a clean slate, kind of like Brady leaving the Patriots and reinventing himself with the Bucks. Um, he, I mean, you saw last night that the defense that that team has is, I would say, among among the top in in the league, if not one of the, if not the best. Um, so he had, you know, guys come over, you know, to help him, you know, with Lazard and Cobb coming over, familiar players. He had Garrett Wilson. He had a stacked running back committee. Um, Hackett. I mean, dude, he's just, yeah, he had his, his original offensive coordinator that he loves working with. I, I, I mean, it all seemed to be falling into place. He came out on the field last night with the American flag for 9-11, I don't know from from the looks of it that place looked as electric as a Monday night football game atmosphere as I've seen in a in a long long time. Yeah. And you know you just kind of wanted to see him do something especially like you know sitting we were watching the game with Bob last night as a long-term Jets fan, you know, these poor, poor fans have gone through the ringer with this team and this was, you know, an exciting opportunity for them to maybe finally feel like a contender, feel like a legitimate favorite to win the AFC East and to go to the AFC championship, maybe go to the, you know, to the Super Bowl. And for him to not even be able to make a, a completion and to go down like that, I've ruptured an Achilles. It's an awful feeling. Um, it's, it's something that's going to be a really hard for him to come back from. And I don't know if he, you know, to be completely honest, if it, it could be the end of his career. And that would really, really be bitter because, you know, He's he is for all intents and purposes among the best to ever play the game. And, you know, he just doesn't have the silverware to show for it. This could have really been his opportunity to get a, a Super Bowl late in his career and to be able to 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 what's so funny, Tick? You say silverware? <laughs> the hardware, the hardware. Hardware. Joseph. I wasn't hardware. gonna stop you. Just keep going. It was a nice hardware, monologue. Hardware it was a nice I monologue. Meant, I meant hardware, but the yes. basic principle is you know, if he does win a Super Bowl before he retires, all of a sudden he's got a couple of rings, and you know, he is legitimately among maybe you know the top five best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Now it's just I don't know what I don't know where we go from here. If he's gonna play again, he's obviously done for the season. The Jets, as great as a win that was for them last year, it's bittersweet because you ain't going anywhere with Zach Wilson. You can't run the ball every fucking play, that's for sure. And at the at the end of the day, it's just I I don't know. It just it left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. It was just not the way you wanted to see that game play out. As fun as a game as it turned out to be. It just, it was bittersweet. Mikey. Um, I'll take it a step further. Uh, there's nobody in this uh, Zoom call and this podcast right now that should have more hatred for Aaron Rodgers than I do. And the fact of the matter is, is I don't hate Aaron Rodgers. I, I, I strongly, strongly dislike the team that he used to play for. Um, and that being said, I'm not only upset about this injury i'm i'm devastated by this injury. it's awful i'm i'm devastated for my friends who are jets fans number one because i'm from the area here so i have several friends who are very diehard jets fans who care very dearly and when you're a fan of a team that sucks penis like the chicago bears okay and you have another friend who's a fan of a team that also sucks penis like jets fans okay it makes it that much more relatable. It is an absolute 
soul crushing, devastating situation. What happened last night, this team was poised to make a run at this thing, a real run. They built it the right way. They built it through the draft. People are going to say, Oh, they brought in an old quarterback. They built it the right way. They drafted the offensive rookie of the year, the defensive rookie of the year, a guy who probably would have won offensive rookie of the year had he not got hurt in Brees Hall. They brought in a new coach who, to my estimation, Salah Salah is a good coach. coach. I think he's a good coach. Uh, They built this defense up to be a premier defense in this league. They surrounded all the all the weapons that Rodgers could have. Then they bring in the crown jewel to cap it off and do it the right way and say, look, now we got it. And for it to be taken away from them in the fourth play of their possession is just it's it's it, it can make you it honestly made me almost physically ill to watch it. I couldn't believe what was happening. I was so upset for my friends again who are Jets fans. Like it's not funny. There's people who made a joke out of it. There's people who called up New York radio, sports radio this morning, were making dumb comments. Packers fans who were calling up saying, oh, you see karma. Shut the fuck up. That's all. Like, have some class. Have some class. Like, this was the worst case scenario ever. I'm not a Jets fan, but I wanted to see what this team was going to do with this guy and the roster that they built. It was going to be one of the best storylines of the season to see him compete against Tua twice, to see him compete against Allen twice, to see him go into New England and try and dethrone Belichick. And by dethrone, I mean the Jets always lose to the Patriots, so I wanted to see what he would do there. And to see it go down the way it went down and to see us get robbed of that opportunity as football fans is devastating. It's yeah. devastating. There's no other way to put it. It was it was it was the worst thing to ever happen in an NFL week one in recent memory. Terrible. Terrible. I agree, Mikey. I was I was I mean, I was excited to watch the Jets. I was I was excited to see Aaron Rodgers be on a great team, but I was more excited to watch what the Jets had built and see what yes. Robert Sala had built. And they just looked, I mean, listen. That team was built so well that they put Zach Wilson in and that team still won the game. I mean, still yes, won the game. you can talk about Josh Allen not having a good game. You can talk about a lot of things that the Bills did, but they still put Zach Wilson in that game and he's not a good quarterback. And that team is so good that they still found a way to win and to be deprived of being able to watch Aaron Rodgers operate with oh. that team. It oh. feels like football fans were deprived of something like we were, we, we were something we were was taken away from us because we we i robbed. was i was excited i mean last week i picked them to win the super bowl i mean i would i picked them to win fucking yeah, everything i did they, they were my pick and i was so excited to watch them and i picked him in my fantasy theme not that that matters but i was right. waxing perez's ass and then uh. he went down i lost but that's neither here nor there but that I, I can't believe, you know, I was working last night. I was I was working on a Bob the Sports episode. I watched Aaron come out. I watched the whole 9-11 ceremony. I watched him bring out the flag. And then the bu- Buffalo got the ball first. I had to go do some work. And um, I was like, all right, it'll just be like five, 10 minutes. I come back out. It couldn't have been longer than 10 minutes. And Aaron was already out of the game. Zach Wilson was was taking snaps. And I was like, what the fuck happened? And I was I was devastated. I was then then I was even more devastated to learn that it was season ending, that it was the ACL. Oh. Um, I hope it he plays again. Nilly's. I would imagine Nilly's. that he does. I would imagine that he does, Joe, but you, you think that it it could be a career ending injury? Achilles is a terrible injury. I'm telling you right now. I I played, I'm not to the putting myself in the capacity of a professional athlete, but I used to I used to be pretty active, and after that Achilles, I didn't do anything for a year. I, I was scared mentally. It, it it really it really messes you up, man. Especially like I had a non contact injury where I was just running and the thing just blew out. I don't know. He, he obviously got tackled, but it's it's just it's an awful injury. It hurts like hell. It takes a long time to rehab. And he's 40 years old. He's going to be that's 40 the, that's, years old. That's, that's the issue. And it, it's not it, like he's 34. That, that calf injury that he sustained in preseason that he brought in through preseason, I think kind of compounded this or may have been the, 
the, the, the premeditated reason as to why this was, you know, he was overcompensating maybe on one leg continuously through training camp and he did everything right. He showed up to training camp. He was doing all the things he wasn't doing in green Bay because he genuinely gave a shit. I believe that I really do as much as I break balls, as much as I, you know, rag on him, he was doing all the right things. And I think he was overcompensating on that other leg. And, and then it ends like that. And now ticket, you brought up the fact that Wilson closed the game out and they were able to come away with a victory. They picked Josh Allen off three times all by the same player, a uh, really true. bad game out of Allen. Terrible Horrible. game out of Terrible. A, f- a fumble. Um, but listen, the, the Jets, the Jets are not going to punt this season, right? They, they, this, this is football. They, they quarterbacks have gone down before now. Yes. Maybe not to the theatrical degree that this, this unfolded like a Greek tragedy because yeah. all of the buildup and all the hype and the way it unfolded truly like a Greek tragedy, but this is and not at the- home. It happened at home. Yeah. Yeah. And, but this is not the first time that a team that had Super Bowl aspirations has lost their starting quarterback. They need to figure out very quickly what they're going to do. Uh, Zach Wilson, he said today, Salah said he's our starter going forward. You know, I'll buy that. Today's the day after the injury. I'll buy it on today, September 12th. But don't tell me they're not going to look to bring in somebody. Uh, they have think, to bring Mikey? in somebody. Matt Stafford, maybe? or Matt Stafford, like- if the Rams go on a, on a losing streak to start the season, perhaps they try and deal for Stafford. Perhaps they try to deal for Jameis Winston. Perhaps they could give Tom Brady a call. I, I don't know. Perhaps they give Tom Brady a call. I, I don't know. And I wouldn't put anything past Woody Johnson at this point because Woody Johnson knows how all in they are this year. And you don't get this, the window in the NFL, man, unless you, you got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes or Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, like the window closes very, very, very quickly. I think the jets realized that they, they captured lightning in a bottle. They thought they had, now they got it. They got to do something. And I think they will. I think they will. I would make the claim too, to be completely honest, that, the fact that the Jets came back and won that game would even more so push yes. them to really be active and Listen, try to bring someone it's, in. It's not like the Jets beat, let's say, the Bears. Let's the let's say Buffalo the Packers. Bills. They beat a divisional opponent. That win no. counts two times. It's not only a conference opponent, it's a divisional opponent. That is a massive win for the jets last night i'm not i think a lot of that was lost obviously in 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 the injury of course and 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 it should be to some degree but they cannot get the pass now their job doesn't get any easier because now they got to go and play the team that just beat the giants 40 to nothing in dallas and that's going to be a very tough game for zach wilson because the way that cowboys defense special teams look uh against against uh the giants that's going to be a real challenge for Zach Wilson. The Jets have to have to just not panic. The Jets have to come up with a conservative game plan where they're going to run the football. Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook looked both, unbelievable. both looked awesome last night. They both did. They both did. And, and they need to control the game with their defense, control the game with their run game, and mix in a little play action and make, make Zach Wilson's job as easy as you could possibly make it. Now, obviously, Dan Quinn and the Cowboys are going to have something to say about that. Micah Parsons and all the studs they have over there. But – but they got it. The Jets cannot panic. The Jets, the Jets have a very good football team still, and it's not over. It's not over, even though the, the, the a crazy event like that occurred. It's still not over for them. I say now it looks like after just a wild first week. To me, the Dolphins look like they're in the in the in the driver's seat right now. To, uh, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Gentlemen. Off, man. We'll he went there, off. It was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable <laughs> game. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll break down these games. Tickets, um, boy, to uh, to uh, I, w- I I said it <laughs> that my, I was like, Mikey called this man. This guy. Well, he- listen, I didn't call anything because this is exactly oh. what happened in the beginning of last season. My thing is too is he went off. But is he going to stay but, healthy? But Joe? Mikey, he looked even. He looked like he, vintage, almost like Aaron Rodgers out MVP, there. MVP, MVP. His back. Foot. He was an MVP type candidate before he, he got hurt last year, and now he looks yeah. tremendous. But the, yeah. the NFL is it's a long, long season. Sure, so he's sure. Is. Stay healthy. And we'll get into. I don't that mean to Dolphins. skip around. I'm not trying to. Skip yeah. Around. No, no, no. I understand. We'll get into that Dolphins game uh, with the um, with the Chargers. But let's quickly go into college. I'll let Mikey kind of steer if there's a game he really wants to talk about. But let's start with none other than Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, everybody's favorite. Colorado getting another win. It wasn't their hardest 
opponent they're going to face this year. They've got they've no, got Nebraska. Table. Nebraska stinks. Nebraska stinks, but yeah. man, they do. That Shadur Sanders looks good, man. He His sure son does. looks great. The 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 number one overall recruit in the country from Jackson State uh, looks great that he brought over to Colorado Hunter. as well. Yep, and yeah. and Travis Hunter and and they. Listen, Prime is doing exactly what Prime does, man. And he's get, he is a marketing genius. He's a social media marketing genius. He's doing exactly what he's got to do. But I, I can't see Deion Sanders lasting at Colorado for that long. I think a big whale school is going to scoop him up. In particular, I think the University of Florida, Billy Napier, I don't think he'll make it through the season. Maybe he does. But I think Florida knocks on his door. And the fact that Florida State didn't knock on his door may just be the the push that Prime needs to say, oh, you don't want me, my alma mater? I'm going to go to the University of Florida. I'm going to turn him back into the Florida Gators of the 2000s with Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow. And you could imagine the level of recruit he'll be able to bring to the University of yeah. Florida or a school of that magnitude if he goes to the SEC or one of the other you know top programs in the Power Five. Not to say Colorado's a, a, a mediocre program. It's not, but it's been much much maligned program compared to those other other powerhouses. So uh great start for Dion though. Great start for Colorado. No question about it. Great start. And I got to point out, Joey D has been looking down at something the entire time. He's got, I little, just joined the, I just joined the only subs chat. Oh, oh, chat he's he's back. oh my God. Is that time? Is that, Did you got to get in right now. before it's too late. I don't want to get, get out. But, there, but if you do check periodically, when someone leaves the chat, you could jump in, but you got to just got to get in there. Tick. You got to be in the, oh, 190 members. I can get, get in. in there. Tickets. The yeah. only subs chat, man. No, okay. It's a fun. Chat. It's a, I will say it's a fun way to like pass the time, but sometimes you got to turn the notifications. Oh, on. You're you have to, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right wait a minute. Now. You have to mute the chat automatically. The chat. Cause it muted. goes fucking. No, you have to mute. It. You have to mute I it. just joined and I got three guys saying fade cutsy and I don't know. We're doing a podcast. They're, and they're your breaking your people, dude. What are they? But what are we fading? Is he is he dogging people? Are they fading me for my pick of the week? Are they fading me for the pick of the week? I I don't understand that. But yeah, you got to mute it. You got to you got to you got to mute the chat. It's an automatic. It's an automatic. It'll just. I will say I love the tenacity. But it it'll go off sometimes. It's just hilarious that you're in there dogging people while we're doing a podcast. That's a multitasking. That's Joe. Joe will not let any comment directed his way go. He will absolutely. Listen, some of these guys, I, I'd say 90, 95% of the guys in that chat, I have mad respect for and I love because they root and they're riders. Yeah, they're good. But they got they're a couple good. fucking rogue guys. Who oh, I fucking, I fucking ban. I, I, I blocked two and subscribers I will, the other day. I, I, and I, won't I will hold block back. you. I don't I care if you're a subscriber or not. I'll block it. I won't hold back. You're gonna come at me. You better be ready to fucking get it back. That's Dude, the a guy way that the I other say. night, a guy the other night in that chat, I lost a game. Uh, college Saturday this past week, I went two and one. After the one game, I won the first game, lost the second game, and then won on that Oregon backdoor cover, which was insane. That right? was yeah. Nuts. But I lost the second the the second game. I went two and one. The second game, the one I lost, the kid writes in the chat. He goes. I, you know what, Mikey V, I hope you lose fucking sleep tonight. Automatically, Jeez. automatically I block somebody like that. Because you know what, bro? Uh, these uh, these other guys who do stuff like this are charging $1,000 for the whole season. I'm charging you less than $5 a month. Bro, and you're going to say so something like that to me? You're getting blocked every single time. You're getting it blocked. doesn't like, make I, sense, I don't man. need your I don't need your $4. Like, I, I don't. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that pompously. I'm saying it that. Like you're not going to speak to me that way. Like you're, yeah. you're but just not, not only that. It's, it's like, it's like people subscribe. If you, if you ride someone's picks, right. I know we're getting off track here, but if you ride someone's picks, you're making the conscious decision to put your money Correct. in that person's hands. As Correct. soon as you do that, you're responsible for that pick. And you know what? If, if you don't like the guy's picks, if you think he's not doing Fade well, me. don't bet. Yeah. Don't Fade put me. your money Fade where me. someone else's mouth is. Fade it me. doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. That being said, we'll resume now. But yeah, the only stuff is a lot of fun. It's a it's it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. That being said, you got an opinion about Colorado or no? I, I listen. This team's banged me two weeks in a row. I am. I am. I am well, so. You're, going, you're, you're fading Colorado you're fading back Colorado? to back weeks. I'm, I'm. I am at the point now where there is a there is going to be a point in the season where they're going to plateau and it's going to come down. And so I you know, don't know what this. You know what this week is is the battle for Boulder. That's Colorado, Colorado State. Colorado, Colorado State. Colorado. State. Colorado. 
10 o'clock, by the way, Joe. That's that's a good time. I'm uh, staying Rams away from this. Buffalo. I'm staying away from this game. Uh, they're going to they're gonna be, I think they'll beat Colorado. They're going to destroy him. The, I, I don't know to. if they'll destroy him, but I think they'll beat him. But the point of the matter is, is I just, I, maybe this is a hot take. And Ticket, I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday, or last week before when Bear Down, you weren't on. Deion Sanders has got to slow his roll a little bit, man. Oh, boy. He's I'm coming. Not, he, I, I listen. I have mad respect for what he's done with that program. I'm not taking that away from him. I think what he's done with them and his 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 program has been amazing. But he's talking like he's going to win the like the collegiate championship. And all I'm saying is like you got to slow your roll a little bit because there's going to be a point in the season where they're going to bottom out. And when that happens, it's going to be very interesting to see how everything unfolds. That's all I'm saying. Ticket, you agreed with me on that. Yeah, my biggest issue. No. My you biggest think? issue. My biggest issue with Coach Prime was the, the deal of the documentary, and that he's keeping all of the money for himself, and not a dime is going to Colorado uh, University, of Colorado. Not that these universities need any more money. I get that, but it's the fact that he's bringing the whole thing. It's all about him. It's Coach Prime, yeah. and he's keeping all that's... the money. None of the players are getting the money. University ain't getting the money. But people, <laughs> but the players are still supposed to buy into the program. I find I I think that's a tough look, but hey, he more power to him. He's getting people to buy into that program. So no no him. real no real good games on the slate to speak of this week that catch okay. my eye. Ticket. Cool. Um, I will say this though, and I will say this, and I'll say it pretty loudly: the Texas Longhorns, the they Texas look, Longhorns. We were on them, tick. Yeah, we were Texas, and they were one of my picks to make the playoff this year. Texas Longhorns, Notre Dame, Alabama. Michigan. I still think Alabama can make the playoff. I do. Um, I think that they're going to have a tough time because Georgia's that schedule quarterback is looks. They got two other guys who were competing with him preseason, so I think maybe they doesn't pivot. look like the, the Texas. Answer. The Texas Longhorns. Now that they got over that hump, Joe, they can basically waltz to the college football playoff. They got to beat Oregon, uh, uh, Oregon, Oklahoma, obviously. Um, Kansas State, TCU stinks this year. They now have they've they've gotten over that hurdle. So as long as they don't have a letdown game, Does the Texas Longhorns stink? will be back. In- yeah, they stink, Dick. They stink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, all, stink. they were awful the first. They got they, blown they, they, out by. They stink, right. Dick. They stink. Okay. All right. They Fair don't enough. suck. They stink. They stink. They stink. They're scumbags. <laughs> um, oh, whoa. Like you didn't say it. I said that. that. I'll say it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, well, then let's just move on to what we wanted to move on to the whole time. Let's go to NFL. First, we're going to touch on yeah. – Last week's games, week one, and then we're going to move on to what we think for uh, projections for week two. I'll run through the games that I think were the biggest, the closest, the most important, the ones worth talking about. And by the end, if I missed one that you guys want to talk about, you let me know. Um, we talked about the Thursday night game last week, so we'll skip that one. If Mikey's got an opinion about the Lions or the Chiefs, we'll get to it when we talk about week two preview. But let's start. Um, let's hey, let's start with the Eagles and the Patriots because that wow. was a that game, was insane. That was a game that looked. It was a tail. It was a Jekyll and Hyde kind of game. I mean, the Eagles came yeah. out. They were rolling. They looked like the Eagles that everyone had nonstop been talking about. The defense, the defensive line. The, How oh, good is Jalen yeah. fucking Carter, man? And then the second, he's unbelievable, man. He's un- like, he had the like, most. He had the most pressure of interior D linemen in the entire it's league. It's almost like you don't even have to blitz with that kind of D line and with Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. I mean, it's it's sweat. It's unbelievable, man. But. Then the second half rolled around. The 16-0 lead came to nothing. Mac Jones, uh, like Joe Montana. I uh, mean, it, it, it was um, – You won, though. You take, found a way to you win. Can't, yeah, you that can't. Game, found a way to win. Yeah, objective you, perspective, yeah. Mikey, you have to – that game fell away from them for a moment. It it did. But number one, it's the first game. It's the first game these guys are all playing together because none of these guys play in the preseason anymore, right? So – that's that's one. Number two, it is so hard to win on the road in the NFL. I don't care what team you are. It is very difficult to win on the road in the NFL. You take it any which way you could get it because you don't know any given Sunday. That doesn't really work in college so much, but in the NFL, it absolutely does. And you know what? It's still Bill Belichick in at home at Foxborough. 
Philly should just come out of that, got the W, move on to this week. Uh, they got the Vikings Thursday night at home, right, Tick? I think yeah. they're playing Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings. They're home, Philly's home. I think. Philly's home on Thursday. Yeah, that's going to be a game I expect Philly to get very physical with the with the Minnesota Vikings and take out a little bit of that aggression because I'm sure that uh, Coach uh, you know, is using that second half as kind of a little bit – you know, you guys almost got beat. You guys gave it up. You guys stopped trying. You guys did whatever he's going to use is a little bit of motivation. They kicked the snot out of the Vikings last year when they played him at home. Justin Jefferson did nothing. Darius Slay was all over him like white on rice in a paper plate in a snowstorm. I expect the same kind of tenacity from the Eagles again this Thursday night. But Ticket, I would take that win and I would run with it. I would. Okay. It's I'm week one. It's week one. You take it. Take of it course, of you, course yeah. I'll take it, but I'm trying to stay as objective as I can. But you're looking at a Patriots team that is projected to be last in that division. No one division is one of the best in football, though, Tech. Okay, that's fine, but still last. Uh, no <laughs> one has thought that the relationship between Mac Jones and Bill Belichick was going that well. No one thought that they were bought into that system. They didn't add so many pieces that it felt like they were going to take a huge leap. And Ezekiel Elliott is is should have been a shadow of himself. And then on the other side, you have the Eagles, who everyone's propping up to be the, the you know the, the next eighty five Bears. And all of a sudden, the second half was a disaster. There's no getting around that. It was a disaster. They made Mac Jones. He was dicing that defense. I'll give it to you that like it's week one. It's a you know a road game's always tough. But I I think I'd also be crazy to say that that it wasn't a little concerning. Um, it's definitely, I could see the concern, but again, I just look at it like it's the NFL. This other team, the Patriots, is comprised of, of of the best, maybe not in the league, obviously, and not in the division, but the bottom line is there's 22 guys that start for the New England Patriots. That's a very small micro percentage of people that could play the game at that level. They yeah. still have players, right? And Mac Jones is still- You look a, good in the second half. He, listen, he is a professional quarterback. He comes from good pedigree. He's had his moments. He made the playoffs his rookie year. Again, I think, Tick, I get I get it. I get it. Because you, you're dominating, then all of a sudden, it's like, what the, what the fuck's going on? But I really think you got to give a little bit to- the fact that you're on the road, it's Belichick. They always have a good defense. Brady they always was scheme. honored. They always scheme the and adjust very well. It, yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I think the Eagles are fine. There's I think a lot they're, going they're on. Better, I, they're better than fine, man. That they fumble, are, Mike, Dallas, that, Dallas is going to be. That Jalen Hurts fumble, man. When the, first of all, he should have never been in that position. But man, when they ran him up the gut like that, it was an option, I think, or maybe it was, maybe it was a designed run. But he ran up the middle and they punched that ball right out and gave the ball right back, and it was looking like they were just going to go down there and march and score based on the way that offense had been operating. That was a scary moment. I mean, it yeah, looked at the end of that game, that. it was going back. It was almost like no one wanted to win that game at the end. He, Everyone can't, he, up, cannot, like, he cannot turn the ball over, fumbling the ball this year. He can't. I could live with interceptions from a quarterback. Well, because fun, I know, and that's what I was just about to say. I could deal with the interceptions. I, I, I can deal with that. But fumbles, ball security, that that's very frustrating. Fields fumbled the ball Sunday. That was – now, granted, at the point, he's just trying to make plays because of ineptitude from the offensive coordinator. But still, I, I, I ball security from the quarterback for fumbling is, like, paramount to me. It's, like, one of, the, like, my biggest pet peeves. I hate when a quarterback can't um, protect the ball, in, you know, in his own hands. It drives me crazy. Yep. You got to also understand ticket as the Eagles, everybody's going to have your number. Like they're, they're circling you on the schedule. Yeah, every week. definitely. So like it's, you're, you're one of the premier teams in the league. You just came from a potentially almost won a Super Bowl. Teams are going to, teams are going to get amped up to play you guys. So Absolutely. you're going to have tough weeks. And to me, the measure of a team that is ready to win a championship or be successful can win the ugly game. So even though it was ugly, it wasn't pretty in the second half, you still found a way to win. You move it on. It's a dub. You put in the in the winning column Agreed. and you keep it moving. Agree. All right. Sounds Agreed. good. Fair enough. I'll take you guys' advice. We'll keep it moving. Um, let's go to a game that wasn't particularly close, but I thought was wildly interesting. Um, the Bengals versus the Browns. I mean, a team that most people seem to be on the Bengals. Uh, I happen to be betting on the Browns. I think Joey D did as well. I mean, they're a wild, they were a wildly underrated team. I did not see the ass whooping that came, especially to an MVP candidate in Joe Burrow. Um, Joey D, what'd you, what was your takeaway from that game, man? Everybody I, that I knew, like, 
You know, I think there were several guys who I talked to who had the Browns as the play of the week this week. Yeah, Browns, I think, were a very popular bet amongst Sharps. Uh, Sharps. It was. That was the, it that was. was the... And we and we were all over it, Ticket. We were all over the Browns. I, listen, I think the Browns have something to prove this year. That defensive front, you know, spearheaded with Miles Garrett. Looked Miles hard. Garrett is not a real person. He's not a real person. Him, like juking and jiving. He was like, doing a. Playing. He was pretending to do basketball crossover dribble before he passed rush, and, and he, he still blew beat the by the center. I mean, he is not of this. It's earth, a Miles joke, Garrett. man. He's not he of is, this earth. He's insane. He, he's insane. I think, aside from Aaron Donald, he's the best defensive player to be drafted that we've seen in the last decade. He's Whoa, dominant over he's the over TJ Watt and Bosa and. I think yeah, he's Garrett, than I think both Ga- of them. Garrett Garrett's dominant, man. I, I ah. listen, I'm not gonna say I would I'm not I would say, say Aaron Donald arguing. to me. Aaron Donald to me over the last now he might slow Aaron down, Donald, but, Aaron Donald is a generational player. He's I think Aaron Donald player. to me is the best defensive lineman I've I've watched in interior. The, last the impressive yeah. thing about Donald is that he's an interior guy on the D-line, and he's doing that, which is even that makes him even more valuable because edge rushers they get matched up with tackles. You get somebody like Donald who gets to go against a guard or a center. I mean, that's just – that's why he's such a valuable asset because there's very few guys who could dominate the way he dominates at his, uh, at his position. But, yeah, Garrett's a freak. Cleveland Cleveland defense looked insane. If Joe Deshaun Burrow, Watson Joe Burrow can wake up and do some some something on the offensive side of the ball and stay in the pocket and make some throws, this team could cause a lot of problems in the I AFC. Agree. I agree. And you know what? There's a lot of distractions too. Joe Burrow just got the biggest contract of of any player in the NFL. That you know they're coming off a big season. They're you know they're going into a, a divisional team. You know the weather wasn't very good. It was wet. It was nice. There was a lot of things that came out. I think the Bengals will bounce back. Well, they're too good a team to let this dictate themselves. But man, that was a, there was a few teams that had bad outings. That, like McPher- that, Mc- that McPherson misses too many kicks. And yet he he's, always he's considered seems one of the best kick field goal kickers. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I watch him, he misses kicks. I Every agree. time. I Every agree. time. I've been fan. Ticket, you drafted him. I know. He, he's <laughs> last year and I have him this year, and he's just been miserable. I don't know why I had him again this year. Yeah. yeah. He, he stinks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sean Watson, man. I mean, he didn't have an incredible game, but he did enough and he looked better. This game, he looked better than any of the games he came back for last year. Say what you want about him. I mean, I think he's a scumbag. I think he's a terrible guy. But the reality is he's playing in the NFL and he's playing. He's he's a starter quarterback for the Browns. And that's that's just the way it is. And evaluating him objectively, if that's the beginning of a long season, as Mikey said, it is a long season. I think he's only going to get better. He's only going to get more comfortable. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be looking much more at a, a Deshaun of three or four years ago than we're going to be looking at the kind of Deshaun we saw last year. And that paired with that defense and those offenses. And Nick weapons, Chubb. That's going to be a scary, scary team, man. He was so far removed from football last year. Like last year was kind of like just putting the, taking the training wheels off again for him, getting back up to speed against NFL defenses. Like this year, like once, like you said, Tick, once a couple weeks, he gets a couple weeks under his belt. He could be easily back to the form he was in. People forget how dominant he had, he was starting to become with the Houston, Texas. Texas. He was was becoming a nightmare to deal with. And that could be happening again. Yep. Um, all right, let's move on to a game that I thought was, listen, man, Trevor Lawrence, these Jags, the Colts put up a fight a game of the week, Tick. It was the game of the week. I, I hit that one. I looked like there was a period there with Anthony Richardson. They were trying to get him in the end zone at the end of that game. And he resulted in, in getting injured. I don't know how serious that was, but they pulled him and the Jags hit that bet luckily. But, um, Early on, Trevor Lawrence looked every bit of that MVP candidate that I thought he would be. Second half, struggled a little bit more, um, and the Colts sort of picked it up. But, gentlemen, Mikey V, what would you make of that game? Yeah, I mean, the Jaguars were as I thought they would be. Uh, you know, I drafted Lawrence in our league for, for good reason. I thought he'd have an MVP-type uh, season. Burrow really let me down week one, obviously. I should have beat Dickie Gass if Burrow does anything, but he didn't. So he didn't. And I'll move on from it. I'll swallow that pill. But Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley. Is, Calvin, Ridley's Calvin Ridley is the X factor for them now. 
Travis Etienne hustling 50 yards down the field to throw a block for Calvin Ridley is exactly what you want to see if you're Doug Peterson and you're the Jaguars and you're a Jaguar fan. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, Jags defense, uh, that's going to be my thing is like, is Trevor going to have to be like Superman in, in like the late season months in the playoffs for them to be able to beat teams? Can the defense go out and win a game, make a stop when they absolutely need to? I don't know yet. Too early to tell. But offensively, they're loaded. And and Trevor Lawrence is he's a beast. He's a beast. Um, and and he's got the a very good head coach paired with him, who is probably just what the doctor ordered for him. Uh, and I expect the Jags to continue to roll in this division, especially the division stinks. So I, I would think that they they would they would have a pretty pretty good uh chance to to run away with it early on. Who would he? I agree 100%. I mean, I can't believe that Calvin Ridley went from being a premier receiver in Atlanta. He gets banned for his shenanigans off the field, which is whatever. He, was an, from, only, he was an only sub. Well, perhaps he was. But then from then, no one really made a play for him. It was like he was just like, like, like Floating left out there. and forgotten. Yeah. And it's like the guy was a stud. Yeah. And it's like now the Jaguars basically just like picked him up for scraps and he looks unreal. And now they still have Zay Jones made an incredible catch yeah, for a touchdown. Christian moves. Kirk literally really didn't do much. And he's he was their number one last year. They they are loaded. Evan Ingram. They are a solid, solid team. And Evan Ingram didn't do much. Right. You know, that's so, what I mean. They they got they got a lot of mouths they could feed in that offense. Yeah, Zay Jones had one of the most impressive catches I saw. That that one and Garrett Wilson. Oh, uh, Garrett Wilson. Was, was, that was unbelievable. And then on the other side of the ball, once the Colts remembered that Michael Pittman Jr. was on the team, they started <laughs> rolling. They started yeah. catching a little steam heat, and the offense was moving, and Anthony Richardson didn't look like an MVP candidate by any means, but he looked serviceable, and he looked pretty good, and he was moving the ball around. And, and then that's why I'm a little concerned with Jacksonville defense because I really didn't think he would be able to do much. So I got to see. I'm curious to see what they'll do this week. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, moving on here, let's move to a game. Let's move to the Saints and the Titans. Mainly want to get you guys' thoughts on Derek Carr. Oh. Mainly wanted to see they they let the Titans stick around there for a lot longer than I thought they would. Um, Joey D, I mean, what do you make of that? What's your take? You got banged on this game. This was this was a tough pill to swallow, and you know it, it comes down <laughs> to the fact that Rabel acted like a little bitch towards the end of the game, not trying to go for it on fourth and six. I'm sorry. I love Mike Vrabel. Fourth and six, two minutes and 11 seconds left in the game. You need a touch. You need two scores to win or a touchdown. And you, and you don't go for the fourth down play and try to win the game. It was awful. Anyways, that aside, I'm still burnt from that. Um, <laughs> Derek Carr looked off. Derek Carr looked terrible. He, he looked out of shape. Now, I think when they get Kamara back week three, that's going to help open some stuff up because they couldn't really run the ball at all. Um, and I think, like, they they struggled to get Olave going. The Titans have a decent defense. I, I just – I wasn't impressed with them at all. It looked kind of like which team wanted to win less, kind of. That, to me, was like – it was not a great game. I, I think the Saints, they're favored to win the – I think the Bucs are going to be better than the Saints this year. Oh, wow. I know that's a hot take, but the Saints didn't look good to me. Yeah. Well, and I don't think the Titans are a very good team. Now, I don't want to go too much, you know, week one assessments and and, and blow it out of control, but they didn't look good. They they just looked like they were hanging on, hanging on. I don't know. I, am I wrong? Do you guys disagree? Do you think they look decent? I, I think the Saints are going to be – well – my preseason futures picks, I took the Saints to win the, the South. And I actually, I took three uh, three teams or two teams? Two teams, NFC champion bets, uh, futures. And I, I had the Saints at plus 1,200 as one of those teams. Wow. I think the Saints defense is good. I think Carr will be better. I think Alave and Michael Thomas will work together. I think when they get Kamara back, it'll be good. But yeah, this game, I kind of thought that Tennessee defense is always good. Teams that like to chew the clock up like Tennessee does. So that's why uh, my pick last week in that game was the one and a half field goal over for the Saints kicker. I kind of felt like it was going to be one of those games where the teams would move the ball, but they wouldn't get into the end zone much. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's what it turned out to be. But again, week one, it's so hard to to come to a concrete conclusion on anything. I, I want to see it play out, but the Saints, Saints are one and oh. So we'll see. We'll see. There are. Um, all right, let's move on to yeah, we could touch on that one. Let's move on to the Packers and the Bears, man. Let's get to it. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the, <laughs> that game. Obviously, you guys both had the same pick in the same game, opposite teams. Joey D came up uh, prevailing there. Uh, Mikey V, how would you feel about that game, dude? Same old shit. Same old story. Um, yeah. ter- terrible coaching. Um, coaching malpractice. Justin Fields, only one quarterback design run when the guy was the most dominant running quarterback in, in, in seasons, in seasons, not just last season, one of the most historical running seasons for a quarterback ever. Uh, I, I don't know if they're trying to make him into something that he's not. Um, I still see a lot of the same issues with him holding onto the ball too long, not going through his progressions quickly enough, uh, afraid to pull the trigger uh, quickly enough. Uh, not letting him air it out downfield, which is a big problem because that's his ultimate strength as a passer is to bomb the ball down the field. They didn't do that at all. They only two passes of 15 air yards or more. Both were completions, 74 yards and a touchdown, both those passes. Um, so he, I, I just, Luke Getze, uh, who we got from Cutsy's Packers, this guy is a liability. I hate his play call styling, uh, his, his, his play call style. He's thrown passes into the flat every play. He's thrown screens every play. It's just archaic. And um, the defense, I knew the defense was going to have problems, you know, stopping the run. Um, I give Jordan Love credit. He came in. He did what he had to do. I didn't think he did anything spectacular. But the Bears cannot get after the quarterback with their front four. And that in the NFL is a death sentence. If you cannot generate some type of pressure with your front four, without having to blitz every time to get pressure on the quarterback. It's a death sentence. You saw it Sunday. If you watch the bears Packers game, they didn't blitz on third down at all. And Jordan love just could sit back there and he picked them apart. He picked them apart. And it's the same old story. The bears should be fucking embarrassed. This was one of the worst losses they could have ever possibly had in terms of like letting down the fan base in turn, in terms of taking all the air out of the balloon. You had an opportunity, no Aaron Rodgers for the first time in forever at home and you couldn't get the job done. It's embarrassing. It's got to get turned around and turned around quickly, or it's just going to be me talking about the upcoming draft and what are they going to do with the coaching staff and what are they going to do with Justin Fields? Cause at this point, I really don't know. I really don't know where it's going. It seems it has to me. I just feel like they're a directionless franchise. I just don't know what direction they're going in. They're not letting fields take, take reins of the offense. It doesn't seem like they trust them at all, which is fine, but then just bench them. Or just, you know, let's just tank this season too. Because it just, I, there's no direction whatsoever. Hats off to the Packers for getting the win on the road. Yep. I mean, he summed up a lot there. Um, here's the thing. that the, the Packers didn't have Christian Watson going in the game. A lot of people thought they were going to get blown out. I actually liked them. I took them as my game of the week. Some say it's biased. I actually just think that, this team has a lot to prove this year. You know, it's the first time no Aaron Rodgers and they're hearing the only reason they did anything for this long was because of Aaron, this and that for the first time, I think you're going to see LaFleur is going to have full control over this team. And hopefully he's going to coach them in a way that is going to be successful. I thought the play calling was well. I thought they had a good mix of run and pass. They didn't make Jordan love do anything too crazy, yeah. which especially for your first game as you know, essentially it's almost like a rookie quarterback because he hasn't played for so long. You don't want to put too much pressure on him. There's, It's a divisional game. It going into a place where they hate the Packers. I thought they handled it well. The defense looked good. Um, I don't know about that Bears offensive line, so I'm not going to give too much credit to the Packers rush because I just think the Bears – Line yeah, bears, pretty bears bad, all lines, man. Porous. Yeah, it's terrible. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like give them too many accolades, but I, I was impressed enough with what I saw. I thought that they, they answered. Now I thought the Bears were gonna start getting DJ Moore involved. It looked like he was ready. And two he made targets, that catch. two targets, two catches, two of the best plays that they had, and Mooney obviously with the touchdown catch. They only targeted DJ Moore two times. Chase Claypool yep. took the entire game off. He took the entire game off. Always he loafed, yeah, he, he he loafed on like well, they Always need to does. cut DJ Moore. Uh, DJ Moore. They need to cut Chase Claypool yesterday. 
This guy, You've I mean, been saying it, it for a while, my negligent. Guy. It's negligent what I saw t- on film. Negligence. Thanks. So I don't know how you could preach high intensity effort and and that's like Matt Eberflus's like principles, the hits principles, like uh, high intensity effort and this that. And then you could watch what Chase Claypool did on Sunday and 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 let him stay as a starter on this team. What message does that send to every other yeah, player in that locker room? I saw some flashes from uh, Tremaine Edmonds, who made some good tackles. I saw flashes from, from Ticket's boy, TJ Edwards, who made a ton of tackles. Uh, DJ Moore, obviously. But other than that, I didn't see much at all. Much at all. Hey, yo, fuck DJ Moore and fuck the Chicago Bears. <laughs> fuck them all. Fuck Whoa. You. I'm joking, Mikey. I love you. <laughs> that was aggressive. You were ready. You were ready. You were actually upset. No, I thought it was a little out of line, but yeah, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't mean it. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing good. I came back and tickets in the studio, and he's got better lighting than. When Stalking I somehow, somehow, ticket makes Bob the studio ever. work. He's making it work. Was that address? <laughs> no, but it's been it's no. been flawless up until now. It really has been. His lighting's pretty good, huh? It looks pretty solid. So this leads me to believe this is really all on you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's dumb. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. 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 But, it, but in my defense, in all honesty, though, I think the lighting the last couple episodes have been pretty good. Better. Better. Get a ring light. Yeah. Got a ring light now that I can <laughs> That'll do it. It's a little bit better. But I, I, I take it all back, Mikey V. I, I, I love your Chicago Bears. I really do. Love you too, pal. But fuck Thanks. DJ Moore, but though. Fuck DJ Moore. Fuck the Bears. <laughs> and fuck you, Mikey V. Oh, my God. I love gosh. you, boys. I appreciate you, boys. So, hey. Sportsman to Mars, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy's something else, man. He really is. <clears throat> I think a little last thing I'll say about the Packers when we move on is I was impressed enough that from what I saw that I don't, I'm not going out and saying that they can win this division yet. Um, Cause I think the lions look really solid. Um, that being said, I do think with the strength, with the schedule of, they have on the books i do think they can win enough games that they could slide into a play up wild card maybe the third wild card maybe the second i'm i don't know the giants looked horrid the giants looked absolutely horrid the vikings lost at home to the bucks there's a lot of things that and the first Talk about week, a fucking flop loss man oh that is an awful loss so like that i look at those things i look around i look at some of these teams and i'm like listen the Packers are right there. I'm not going to get too excited, but I love what I saw week one. They did what they had to do. And when they faced a little adversity, when the Bears came back and scored, they got the two-point conversion. All of a sudden, it was a 10-point game. They went right down the field, yep, and they yep, stuck yeah. it. They they just punched them in the mouth, got a mm-hmm. touchdown, and then a pick six, and the game was over. I mean, yeah. that, it's it's yeah. the strength of a team is when you can face a little adversity and come back strong. So they showed me enough. I'm not going to jump to conclusions, but I liked what I saw. Yeah, I mean, I would say my big winner of that game, it would, you would think it would be Jordan Love, but the amount of criticism that LaFleur has taken, I think a lot of it rightfully so. I sold him. I think he's the big winner for the Packers on this game. I think to take that team without a Christian Watson and to, to do what they did to a team that I am still high on, I'm not selling the Bears. Uh, it was wildly impressive. It I'm, I'm not selling the Bears. I like them. I have a history of being early on teams. Maybe maybe the Bears will be great the next year or the year after that. Maybe I'm a little early on them. I do that a lot. But, man, the Bears, to me, this is – I'll tell you the same thing you told me, Mikey V. It's week one. It's a long season. You guys got to get your footing. You went against the division rival that's had your number for a long time. <laughs> These Bears have a good team. They've got a, 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 a one of the worst offensive lines I've ever seen in my entire life. But I've also seen teams with bad offensive lines go very far, including the Cincinnati Bengals not too recently – that's a much better team. They don't have the pieces that they do. But the, what the Bears can do better, and you guys already touched on it, is the DJ Moore thing. When you have a playmaker like him, I think he is one of – I think the world of that guy. I think he is one of the most talented wide receivers in the league. The Panthers didn't know what to do with him, and the, he still made it work. He had explosive plays. He was great. But the Panthers, it was just wasted. It was like Calvin Johnson on the Lions. It was like Larry Fitzgerald on the Cardinals. And now the Bears have him. But you got to design plays around him. Find ways to get him the ball because he is your explosive playmaker. And when you do that – 
I think the Bears are going to start winning some football games. I don't. <laughs> you don't. Okay. All right. Well, well I, 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 I love everything you said, Tick, and I want to buy into it. It's just that, you know, you know, it's week one for the Eagles, but the difference is, is the Eagles won and the Eagles won the NFC. Not only did they win their game, but they also won the NFC last year. The Bears haven't won anything in fucking years. So <laughs> for me, it's just a little tougher. I got to see a sign of life. Um, I got to see a sign of life from them, man. It's it's just, it's depressing right now. It really Fair is. Enough. I'm enough. over it. I'm over it. Believe me. And actually, I got over it a lot faster than I normally get over it um, because I'm just so used to it. I'm, I'm well, like it was probably numb. when you were standing out in the rain. It washed all Yeah, your- that was good. That was good. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to a game that we already touched on, but let's dive deeper into it. The Dolphins and the Chargers, possibly the most exciting game of the week, certainly from an offensive standpoint. I mean, it was just back and forth football, man. It was exciting. It was almost like watching the 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 Chiefs and Bills a couple of years ago. It was just blow for blow. Um, Joey D, I mean, what was your takeaway from that game? I, I don't know, man. I, there's a lot of games that I thought I, I foresaw going a certain way and went the other way that I, I don't know. I'm not okay. – I don't know. All right, my I, God. I, I, some – the. <laughs> It's it's I mean it's 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 two things. Brandon Staley sucks. That's number one. I think he's a terrible head coach. I don't know how he's still a head coach. Yeah. I, I I'm wondering if Justin Herbert's. I don't want to say he's overrated, but is he a little overrated? Is he a little? Is he a little? I expected the Chargers to win this game. I thought that they had every opportunity to win this game. Everyone and they just the keep... Chargers to win. Game. They everyone. keep on just shooting themselves in the yep. foot, and at yep. some point. I got to be the idiot to keep thinking that they're going to win these games when they don't yeah. win those games. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I, I think the dolphins are good, but I also think that the chargers just get in their own way, man. And on the flip side to a tongue of Iloa, Tyreek Hill, hey, look, Jal- real, man. Jalen Waddle um, to a tongue of Iloa. If he stays healthy is, um, is going to be in the MVP conversation for the whole year. But, but, I just can't see a world where he stays healthy. I just can't. Not with his not with his past, unfortunately. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I just I have a hard time seeing his path through 17 football games against good defenses, especially when he faces like the Jets front and when he faces, you know, uh when he's got to go against the Bills front. Like I I just I just can't see how he's gonna last the entire season. But if by some way he does. This is the Tua I thought that you, you'd probably see because when he's healthy, you saw it last year, he could be dominant. This offense could be dominant. They just have guys who are just faster than everybody else. They're just faster than every other guy on the field, and it's not Tyreek really close. Is a, he's the chief. Terry Kill's not a real person. I mean, he's an alien. <laughs> so, um, he's, you see that catch he made? He didn't even look. At, he didn't even look. It was a perfect throw and, and a perfect catch. Defender. He just like this. And it was I like just, over you know, the just, defender. The defender his swiped you know, at it's just it. So, and it's right just so unfair. It's just so unfair how like I can never have a player like that or a guy who could get him the ball. DJ Moore is solid, man. He it's, is so good, Hill. Mikey. Get he's him not the Tyreek Hill. He's not Tyreek Hill. No, he's and, not Tyreek. Justin Tyreek's, Fields and Justin no, Fields. No, yet. no one's giving too. him the chance. No, he was with Tyreek's the Panthers and now he's with the Bears. Tyreek's a top four or five receiver in the league. I think. I think. I think. I think he's. Top he three. said he's going to break the 2000 yard barrier this year. He's, you know what it is, is like, I think people are just hesitant to say he's better than Justin Jefferson because Jefferson looks more like a wide receiver. Well, Jeff, Tyree Jefferson Kills had an unbelievable. Better. Jefferson's well. unbelievable. There's no question, but, but, but I've seen Tyree kill win ball games and I'm not saying, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's that Minnesota just stinks. Maybe that's, and you're used to seeing Tyreek, you know, catching balls from Mahomes, being deep into playoff runs. So maybe that's why I, I'm a little biased, but Tyreek Hill, man, if he ain't 1A or number two or number one, you know, him him and Jefferson are like neck and neck. They really are. And Chase, Chase too. But I mean, obviously you didn't see anything out of him this week, but. I can't believe the Chiefs had Tyreek and Kelsey. Yeah, at the their, same time in their, in their prime, too. So they, they did exactly what they should have. Um, <laughs> I'm not ready to crucify Justin Herbert yet. This this has been the Chargers' mo before Staley. Back when Philip Rivers was there, they'd make the playoffs, but they'd always find ways. Marty Schottenheimer. To lose. 
lose football games. It's in the some some organizations have it in their DNA to lose. And unfortunately, Mikey, you, 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 Bears are one of them. But yeah. the Jets, you know, the Lions, they find way ways to lose football games. And the Chargers, maybe they do a little bit more winning in the regular season. But Philip Rivers always fucking knew how to lose a game, man. And it looks like Justin Herbert stuck <laughs> the same trend with that organization. And Brandon Staley certainly ain't fucking helping. But what really didn't help was Tua Tungavailoa looking like Joe. He looked like vintage Aaron Rodgers out there. He was throwing off his back foot. He was moving around. Think the- it was impressed. He was everywhere, man. I couldn't believe what I was watching out of that guy. It was everything what did he throw that for 460 I saw yards. That I didn't see. What's this, Joe? He threw for what 460? I think it was unbelievable. Yards. It was crazy. Yeah, that's that's. Absurd. I mean, it doesn't suck that he's got weapons, you know, all over the fucking field. But still, I, I'm I'm not ready to crucify Justin Herbert. But there's something about those Chargers, and there's certainly something about those Dolphins. Man, they looked unbelievable. Um, all right, let's move on to the next game. Not a particularly close ones, but um, certainly shocking. Uh, the Sunday night game, Cowboys Giants. I think oh. a lot of people thought the Giants would at least be competitive. I saw a lot of people taking the Giants plus three or three and a half, whatever it was. And the Cowboys turned it into obliteration quickly, man. I mean, Mikey, are the Cowboys that good or are the Giants that bad? Or what What happened there, man? Uh, I think they just got smacked in the mouth uh, right off the bat. Giants moved the ball right down the field. And then the block field goal, that changed the entire uh, trajectory of the game, flipped it on its head almost instantly. Um, and you know, I think very disappointing for Giants fans who I think were a little delusional, um, somewhat delusional about the way some of them anyway. So there's some of these Giants fans are very tough. They're very tough to deal with. They're very pompous. They're very, uh, you know, arrogant. Some of them, some of them. Uh, and I think they just like, they were just kind of going with the, you know, Daniel Jones is going to come out. He's going to look like, you know, you're not going to believe what he's going to look like year two under Brian Dayball. And (laughs) it's early again, it's week one, it's week one. And you can't, you can't over, over buy into one way or the other. And I'm not gonna, um, but man, oh man, Dak Prescott has beat them what 10 times in a row now. And everyone thinks Dak is kind of this mediocre guy who kind of just floats around, uh, uh, you know, and is is the benefactor of a really good roster that's put, been put together in Dallas. But yeah, Tony Pollard and that defense, bro, that defense, uh, that defense is is a dangerous, dangerous unit. Michael um, Parsons is special. You saw some really good defense this past week in the NFL, which is good to see. Like you saw some units that really have some some top tier defenses, San Francisco, Dallas, the Jets, the Browns. Cleveland. Like You saw some. You, I said the Browns. Yeah, they, 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 you really saw some good, good defensive play and, and that's good. The league needs it because, you know, listen, all these teams score, but Giants boys, the Giants are just, they're kind of like the bears right now uh, with the Packers. The Cowboys just got their number and they can't figure it out for whatever reason. They can't figure it out and they need a bounce back game in the worst way because this, this, forget it. This market is going to turn on Daniel Jones. Forget it. They'll be begging for uh, who's the backup. Tyrod Taylor is still, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, it is. I think it is. Is it? He's yeah. been the backup for all 32 teams, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no Bridgewater has. <laughs> yeah. True. Bridgewater too. Yeah. Him and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Joey, any thoughts on this game? It was, it was, it was, you know, it was, it wasn't enjoyable to watch at all. Um, we had the Cowboys, so that was nice. But aside from that, it was just, uh, I don't know, man. It was just, uh, the Giants made no adjustments. They didn't make any adjustments throughout the, the game. And I actually think Dayball's a really good coach. I think he's he's got them trending in the right direction. The fact that they made the playoffs last year, they beat the Vikings in a big game. No one gave them a chance to win. Um I think he's got them drinking the Kool-Aid, but they, like, like Bear Down said, they, they really have to reassess mm-hmm. and come back out and do something big. They got to get Saquon involved early on because their receiving core is just, it's not that, it's not that deep. It's not, it's not that special. All. It's not and it's like, all. and when you have, you have Daniel Jones, like you, you have to get Saquon involved so that make the team stack the box and stop the run, and then open up, and hopefully you can start getting some passes downfield. Because otherwise, I just don't know how they're going to be an offensive threat this year. They just don't look. They don't look intimidating, and they don't look 
they don't look like a team that's going to do much. Now, hopefully they turn around, but that was awful showing week one. It's terrible. I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I thought the, I mean, this is the worst possible outcome. If you're, if your team's in the NFC East, because the last thing you want, you, you never want the Cowboys to win because they're going to talk about them nonetheless, but for them to put such an ass whooping on this team, we're never going to hear the fucking, and this 40 to nothing win, they could lose the next two games. People are still going to be talking about this. It's the worst possible outcome. <laughs> if you're a fan of the NFC East, these Cowboys are going to be talked about nonstop and they're going to continue talking about it. And they're going to use this leg as, a crutch um this win is a crutch and it's unfortunate um but who knows maybe they are the real deal ticket we're all gonna have to fucking listen to all these cowboys fans never t- do stop you hate more goddamn ear off. do you hate the giants or the eagles or, or the cowboys more? Well, the cowboys by a landslide they're oh, fans really? all over the country and they never stop <laughs> talking about how good they are and yet they haven't won anything in 30 30 years 40 years and not they 40, 30. Stop talking ever. Then they're ever somehow Dallas has fans all over. It's like Patriots fans. They're fucking it's America's ever. team, Tick. And, yeah. and, and it's unreal. Um, it's just a <laughs> possible outcome for, for, for me and uh, and for the NFC East. Um, all right, let's move on to one more game, unless you guys want to dive into a different one that we missed. Um, and then we'll get into our review of next week, but let's talk about the Monday night game. We talked about Aaron Rodgers, but let's get into the nitty gritty of the bills and how good that jets team looked. They pulled out a win and what a story. If you watch hard knocks, that guy who ran back the punt, I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. Man. What was the backdrop of good that guy? Him. Gibson. Yeah, what was the backdrop? He story? just was relentless. He he never let the team drop him. He was everything they asked of him. He did. He was he, he just he just continued to impress them. Every time it looked like he was about to be cut, he did just enough to stay on the team. And then in overtime here Roger. on Monday Night Football, he fucking runs that. Now there was there was a block they missed. There was a block oh, that probably trip. Came back, but still, uh, yeah. it was it was a great story, and the Jets pulled it off. But um, Mikey V. Takeaways from the game other than Aaron Rodgers. Uh, takeaways from the game is um, I'm concerned about Josh Allen. Uh, I'm co- I'm concerned about Josh Allen. I I I uh, and uh, I'm not trying to bring Josh Allen down, but I, I when a quarterback is forcing the issue when there's no need to force the issue, and he made throws last night that there was just they're uncalled for. They're not mistakes. They're not. They're not like defenders making elite plays. Like he just made a couple plays last night where it was like, you shouldn't be doing that now. He still the most frustrating thing. Let's forget about the turnovers for a second. He's got to slide. He's got to go out of bounds. I mean, you guys know this guy a lot better than I do. I've only spoken to him on one occasion, and he was the nicest guy in the world. And I'm not trying to bring him down. I'm really not. But I'm going to answer the question and talk about it the way it is. I mean, he's not running out of bounds. He's not sliding. He's trying to run over safeties and linebackers. Like, I don't know if he just doesn't care about the longevity. I understand this is the way he's always played the game, and this is the way he believes the game should be played but if he's not going to be able to be 100%, he's not going to be good for his team. And he's the guy that gives this team the best chance of success. Yeah. So I'm concerned about the things I saw from Josh last night. Again, if I'm a Bills fan, I'm concerned. Um, I'm concerned about their rush defense. And, you know, Brees Hall kind of shredded them a couple times. I think their pass rush is just fine. On the flip side, the Jets, I think their protection is going to be a problem. Their, their protection is going to be a problem, and, and they got to do something and figure something out to slow that down. Uh, but the Jets' defense is the Jets' defense is 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 really good. Uh, they're they're three deep on these pass rushing. Uh, this pass rush rotation is just deep as deep gets. So they could keep fresh and they could keep bringing these guys in. Um, and I, you know, it was it was a it was a bittersweet night for Jets fans, obviously. Uh, it was a roller coaster of emotion for Jets fans, obviously. Um, and it's a divisional game. So, you know, bad night for the Bills, good night for the Jets in the fact that they, you know, record wise, what it counts for. Um, but moving forward, uh, the Bills just Josh, Josh got to take care of the football. He got to take care of the football um, and, and just go down. 
Go down, Josh. I Go agree. out of bounds. Do you agree? Bob, Bob said on multiple occasions, he said he's got he's going to get hurt. Someone's going to clock him. Yeah. I mean, and he got you know, clocked last night. He could have got did. hurt last night. He got yeah, clocked he a couple times. I think the thing is with Josh is um, I think, you know, the NFL and the media – are are such a reactionary league. Like I'm watching Stephen A this morning and they're talking about whether their window of opportunity for Josh Allen has closed. I, I think that's a gross over exaggeration. Now I, I, I will be the first to say he has to be more careful with the ball because last night when they're up 13 to three at halftime and it looked like Zach Wilson couldn't get them a first yeah, down. That should have been the end of the game. If you just manage the game and you get some first downs and you pin them down in their own zone, you can pretty much squash any chances of them coming back. But it's like once they got the first, the first two interceptions, he was trying to force something and a big play. And what happened is once that happened, the, the fans went from absolutely deflated, like dead, to all of a sudden they started slowly getting back in the game. And then after a while, it was like, okay, well, listen, they can't score on us. If our if our offense could do something, we could come back. And it gave them it gave them hope. So I think, listen, he's a big time playmaker. He's going to be just, fine, but he's just got to settle in next week. He's got to come back and really just be protective of his, of the ball. And he's just got to he's got to do his thing. And I think they'll be fine. But it was a horrible night for them. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think Josh has got to do some studying, man, because there, there were some plays to make that he didn't make, and there were some throws that he made that should never have been made. And it looked like he, for the first time since I've been watching him that he wasn't reading the defense the same way he was. To he me was last not- night, he reminded me of Jay Cutler. That's who he reminded me of because I watched Jay Cutler yes. for many, many years. Jay Cutler had all the arm talent in the world. Jay Cutler could win games for you. He did win games for the Bears. He was a 500 career quarterback. That was the story of his career. He was a 500 career quarterback. Josh is obviously better than that. Um, But the thing with Jay was that he would just make throws after he could go for nine for nine, 175 yards, two touchdowns. And then all of a sudden he could throw three interceptions in a row. And you're just looking at him like, what, what, what's going on? That's the first thing that popped in my mind when he threw that third interception last night. I just could not believe what I was watching. I couldn't yeah, believe it. Forced, I mean, he was, he was missing safeties him. that were obviously that like he was it was like he saw one on one coverage where there was actually a safety. That, I mean, he was just missing, he was just not reading the defense as, as well as he normally does. He normally torches teams. Yeah. But um anyway, I mean, and also on the other side of the ball, the Jets have an amazing team. All they need is a quarterback. So I don't know if Tom that's Brady a lot. There. I don't that's know if Philip Rivers is out there. Obviously, Colin Kaepernick <laughs> threw his hat. In the would, that's I would, outrageous. I would this guy love, needs to get out of the freaking I would love tablets. To see, I would love to see Brady. I would Jets. too. I would love to see that. I would, it would be so cool, man. Although with that offensive line, I mean, he, he would might, be yeah, killed. He'd be in a lot of trouble. He'd, he'd be, be killed. Of he, he might think better of it. Um, all right, boys, unless there's a game that you desperately that, that I missed that you want to talk about, let's move on and we'll quickly go through some of these reviews. Um, we might miss questions this week, depending on how long this goes, but let's let's dive into some of these spreads and some of these week two previews. Um, let's start with nothing other than the Vikings and the Eagles on Thursday night. Vikings are seven point dogs. We're in Philadelphia. Um, Mikey V, how do you see that game going? A lot of points, but if, you know, gun to my head, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick the spread in that game. I'd look elsewhere. It's a lot of points, but gun to my head, I'd take Philly. Okay. Joey D. I would actually take the the Vikings to cover with the spread like that. That's a big spread. But I think, I think the Eagles win by like four or five. I think that they, you know, I think there could be a lot of scoring in the game. Okay. Fair enough. Give me the birds as well. Uh, Minus seven. Might buy might buy half a point to six and a half, but um, all right, let's move on to a team that we didn't talk about, but the Rams uh, playing the 49ers. 49ers oh. are eight point favorites. They are in Los Angeles. Um, I thought Matt Stafford looked better than people thought he would, but anyway, boys, what do you guys think? Yeah, Niners. Um, again, that's a huge number, and it's a huge number to be a home dog to. Um, but again, probably a game I wouldn't pick, you know, and I won't post, but 
again, we're doing it. So I got to do it. I'm going to take the Ram, uh, the Niners because the Niners are just a vastly superior football team. Typically Top when I bottom. see a spread that's over seven, I kind of wait till later in the week before I do anything, just because if some people start, start taking the other side, that spread can come down. And then if it goes up more, I just stay away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that being said, the Niners look ridiculously good. And Brock Purdy, I want to doubt this guy more than anyone. He's making plays left, right, and center. I'm taking the Niners. I don't even think it's a question. Yeah, I was shocked at Brock Purdy, too. He looked awfully co- – he looked the most confident he had ever looked. It's unbelievable yeah. how good he looked. He looked. Um, yeah, I'll take the the Niners as well, despite me uh, liking Matt Stafford. Um Ravens at Bengals. Bengals are still a three and a half point favorite. Mikey V, who do you like in that game? All things should tell you that the Bengals are going to have a bounce back game. Um, three and a half is tough. Baltimore just won a game. Uh, they 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 struggled a little bit against Houston, which I think surprised some people. I'm very high on the Ravens this year. Very high on the Ravens this year. Uh, you give me the Ravens with the points, uh, even though I do think it's a bounce back week for the Bengals. Burroughs played well against the Ravens in the past. I think maybe they could cover the hook. But again, you know, not one of my favorite games on the board, but I'll take the Ravens with the points. I got to see a lot more out of Lamar Jackson than what we saw last week. That was tough. No yeah. J.K. Dobbins. He's out for the season. I think the His Bengals. career's over. His career's oh, dude, over. it's awful to see. Some guys well, just can't. Said, I some guys Dobbins, just can't. But... They can't get rid of the injury bug. It's awful, man. I'm a Dobbins um, guy, but yeah, that's, it's tough. that's that's the but end. um I'm gonna go Bengals with the bounce back week this week. I'd probably buy a half point, bring it down to three. Um, I think that I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that, or even buy a point to two and a half. But I think the Bengals bounce back. They need to. Um, I think I think they come out firing. I, I would take the Bengals here. Okay, I'm gonna roll with the Bengals as well. I think the Ravens are wildly overhyped. If you watch the fantasy football bonanza, I was selling on Lamar for fantasy. I, I just don't see it with them. I think the Bengals, as Mikey V said, are poised to have a huge bounce back game. So I'll take the Bengals. Um, let's move on here to – let's go to the Bears and the Bucks because I think Bucks. the Buccaneers – even surprised some people. I think Baker looked a lot better than people thought he would. Look better than I thought he would, certainly in the second half. Bears um, have to go on the road and play them in Tampa in that heat in fucking Florida. Tampa Bay, the line is three, right? Right. Yeah, I think it's yeah, three. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay with a bullet. I'll pick the against the Bears every week until I see the I would take now. the I would take Tampa Bay as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take the Bears plus three. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> You're a sick, sick person. <laughs> Baker Mayfield, dog. I mean, he that's what I Vikings said against Minnesota. Minnesota. And Minnesota's a better team than the Bears. A much better team. All right, fair enough. I mean, Kirk Cousins is another guy who just finds a way to lose football games. He does. He sure does. So, anyway, um, give me the Bears with the points. Fuck it, I'm doing it. Chiefs in Jacksonville. Chiefs three-point favorite. Who you guys got, Mikey B? That's an interesting game. Um, Obviously, the Chiefs got Chris. I don't know if Kelsey's back. I know Chris Jones is back because they signed him to a one-year deal. So, that's massive for the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs on the road. Listen, are the Chiefs going to lose two games in a row? That's really no. the ultimate question here, because if the Chiefs do lose this game, I don't think, you know, what are they going to lose it by one point? I mean, I guess they they could. Um, what is it? Three tick? Yeah. Chiefs three. minus three. Chiefs minus three. Oh, I take this. No problem. Yeah. I mean, listen. if Kelsey plays, if Kelsey plays, I have to go with the Chiefs. Jacksonville is going to be up for this game as a home dog. There's no question. They lost to this team in the playoffs last year. Um, You know what? Fuck it. Give me Jacksonville plus the three at home. Give me the home dog. Give me the home dog. Uh, And I think panic city will set in. And then I think the chiefs will start rolling in like another week or two. I think the chiefs will get back on track. But give me Jacksonville minus three. three. Okay. Okay. I'll go. It's tough because I love everything about this Jags team minus Doug Peterson. I've always been selling this guy, even when he was an Eagles coach. Don't love the way he he coaches football. Just don't I think he's he won you a Super Bowl. I just think, sure, yeah, well, Frank Reich did. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I but I do love this Jags team, and I think Mikey's right. I think the Chiefs will get on track, but I, I think it'll take I think a couple more weeks. Um, coming off a loss with the Lions, it's hard to see him going zero and two. But 
Fuck it. Give me the Jags. Give me the points. Um, all right, moving on here. Let's go to Jets Cowboys. Cowboys are going to be an eight and a half point favorite. Oh. Who knows what happened to Zach Wilson, but where's the game tick? We're we're in Dallas. In Dallas. Yep. Oh, that that could be a bloodbath. They got a yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, job. it could it could certainly be eight a and a half is a lot of points. Eight and a half is a lot of points against a defense that looked that good last week. That's what I'll say. Um, I'll take the Jets. Plus I'm going to take points. the Jets, too. I'll okay. take the Jets with the points. I'm going to roll with the Jets as well. Um, all right, let's move on to New England. The Dolphins are playing the Patriots next week. We got Miami as a two-and-a-half-point dog. Yeah, no, that 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 makes that line makes no sense. Right? And because of that, I'm going to go Patriots. Right, right. That's really what, what the tendency would be because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So you would the, think the, the the Dolphins would be like four and a half point favorites. Sure, I would. think the Dolphins would be the, the or the game's in New England, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would think it would be the opposite. I think it would. I thought it would have been Miami minus two or minus two and a half. I don't think they'd get three on the road against, but certainly the favorite. Um, the fact that they're not, they're the after, dog. After, wait, wait, they're the dog. They're, are they minus two and a half? Miami's minus two and a half. Oh, Miami's okay. minus two and a half. Oh, oh, okay. I thought they were the dog. I thought they were the dog. No, they're um, not the dog. The line is still suspiciously small. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take Patriots because that line makes no sense to me. No, I don't. would think it should be three and a half or uh, close to four. Very weird. Very weird. Um, very weird. And, and by the way, the, the Patriots almost... Almost just beat the Eagles at home. I know. I know. Give me Miami. Okay. I'm going to take Miami as well. Fuck it. Um, and then let's <laughs> round it out with the Browns playing Monday night in Pittsburgh. The Browns are oh, That's only, a good game. Yeah, Browns are only a two-and-a-half point favorite. Yeah, I mean, you can't make them that much more on a Monday night football game on the road. Um, they dominated the Bengals. Pittsburgh looked – Kenny Pickett – uh oh. see see this is the thing is pittsburgh was such a darling because of the preseason because pickett and pickens played basically the entire preseason and they destroyed these guys who they're playing against who are not starting quality guys in the nfl so i think a lot of like preemptive hype there um this is going to be a dog fight game always is but give me the browns i'm sorry give me the browns i hate to do that because you know uh you know i like the pittsburgh fans i like the pittsburgh fan base um, but yeah, I got to roll with the Browns again. The Browns tick, like you said, I think they could be, and Joe said too, I think they could just be a, a difficult team to have to deal with if the defense continues to play the, the, the way they uh, did last week. And if Deshaun could continue to, to uh, improve as well. I'm going to go with the Browns, but I have a feeling Pittsburgh's going to really step up this week. Okay. This could be a game. I'm 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 calling right now. I'm going with the Browns. I have a feeling that I'm going to be wrong on this pick. Though. Here's what here here's here's, here's my thing. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to be able to run the ball against Cleveland. And if they get put in a position where Pickett's got to just sit back there, I think the Browns are just going to fucking tee off on him, which scares me. Pittsburgh's you know? going to get demolished. This they will get demolished this week cuz not only last week did Kenny Pickett look like he didn't deserve a job in the NFL not even as a backup last week Najee Harris was nowhere to be found. I mean they, he looked terrible too that all I, I, I had to draft him in one league in my other league that I play in because he fell so far that I couldn't not take him sure. and he just he's got no burst at all this guy runs like he's got fucking 50 pound dumbbells glued to his feet. He really does, man. He's just, he just, he's, that's why, I mean, the guy has never had more than, I think he's, he's rushing now for what, this third or fourth season. And he's never averaged more than like something like three yards a carry or something like that. Like he's just, yeah. he's, he's Jag. He's Jag. <laughs> he's Jag. Just it's the guy. Steelers too, though, man. I, I don't know. I'd like to see him on a different team. But um, all right. Is there a game that we missed, guys? The Packers are going to beat the Falcons this week. Okay. They're Let's minus talk two about favorites. It. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, the Packers are in Atlanta and they Could are be a scary game. Yeah, but I think they'll cover the two point spread. That's Where, they're in Atlanta? They're in Atlanta. Okay. And they're the favorite, Greenback? Minus yep. minus two. 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Atlanta, Atlanta, I think is interesting. Uh, Atlanta, yeah. I think is interesting. Um, that's a tough game. I would never. There's bet another. Game there's ever. another game too. The Raiders and the Bills. Bills are minus nine at home. Yeah. Wow. See, now you got to take that. You, <laughs> you have to take that. You got to take that. I'll take that. I will take the Bills minus nine. The, you the, will. The, the, yeah. I actually think the Bills yeah. are going to blow the no. door. The Bills that are going to blow the is doors too big, off of them. That line's too big. They're begging people to take Vegas. You're taking... begging people. I, I, I would... agree. I agree 100%. They're begging you to take Vegas. I'm They're a begging massive you. Jimmy Garoppolo guy. Everyone. Oh, just, God, just, just, oh. just win Jimmy. Just win Jimmy. Oh, it's never pretty, no. but what does he do? He wins football games, and he's certainly going to keep him close. Plus, the Bills team that just looked atrocious. I'm taking the Bills by 14. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's insane, man. Um, um, give me yeah, the, the Atlanta game, I don't know, man. The Atlanta game could be a very interesting game. They, you would take Atlanta? I don't know. I would never take this game ever. Um, but we got to, I mean. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, give me Atlanta as the home dog. Tick, who do you At- like? Atlanta is a fun team to to yeah. kind of watch, man. With Desmond Ritter, B. John Robinson, some of these pieces that they have, in the, that's it's an offense that you don't normally see in the NFL, not, at least not right now. Right. They're a lot of fun to keep an eye on. And plus, dude, Algier, Allgaier, however you say his last name. Algier, he's yeah. One of Pitts. the best backups in the league, man. Pitts and Algier, Drake London are pretty Pitts, solid, Drake too. Drake London, yep. yep. Yeah, so uh, give me – I don't know. The Packers look so good. I don't know what would take this game, but I love watching the Falcons for the first time in a long time. Um, yeah, fuck it. Give me the give me the Falcons plus two. Oh, tick. Uh, <laughs> then the <laughs> – Giants and Cardinals, Giants minus five and a half. You got to think the Giants bounce back here. You just got to think they bounce back. Yeah, if they, yeah, I'll take the Giants. If they don't, I would take the Giants as well. Cardinals took a fight last week. Um, but yeah, I mean, minus five and a half. You they're know what Arizona. I love? Where, where, where is that game? Where is that? Game? In it's in Give Arizona. Me the Cardinals. In Arizona, huh? Give me the Cardinals. They're in Scottsdale. Shit. Glendale. Shit. <laughs> if that was a home game for the Giants, I would say Giants first half is 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 like the play of the week for me. Mikey loves not. a good first half, man. I do. I he do. sure do, dude. I do. Um My last game we missed was the Broncos at home against the Washington Commanders. The Broncos are favored yeah, minus three and a half. Home. I just moved on from that. Mr. One. Unlimited yeah. is looking more and more limited by the week, man. This guy is he looked he look the ball a lot better than he did last year, and I'll say that for him, but it still didn't look effective enough. When they had to win, when they had to score to end the game, they came up short. That's all I look at. All right, fair enough. So you're you're I saying the Raiders the commanders then? I would take the commanders. I was impressed by that Sam Howell. Huh? I thought he played quite well for his first ever game. Yeah. Yeah, Mikey V, you want to touch that game or no? I mean, I wouldn't, but I'll, I'll take Denver only because historically uh, Denver never loses back-to-back games at home this early in the season. They're like the toughest team in the first two weeks, one of the toughest to beat at home. So for them to drop two at home back-to-back weeks, I mean, I don't know, man. You might as well just fucking fire Russell Wilson to outer space if that happens. So give me the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> um give me the commanders i'll take the commanders and the points um all right gentlemen i'm gonna leave it up to you we could do just have who's a problem we could do just questions or it was a long pod we could call it here what do you boys want to do i think we call an audible and uh we go have some dinner here tick because fair enough fair enough uh um, sleep <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i hear it um all right gentlemen another good one it's always good when football's back Love i'll tell you who's a problem okay all right that Robbie Berger is a big problem. <laughs> Interjecting into our podcast and, and cursing me out like that was uncalled for. It was yeah. uncouth. I'd actually uncouth. like to. I'd like to see it discussed in the in the digest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. I love um, you, boys. Um, all right, all right gentlemen. For another good, another week, good boys. one. Like, comment, subscribe, and we normally will get to your questions. So please fire in your questions to the Instagram account, Sportsman Pod. Um, gentlemen, another good one. As always, that's Joey D. That's Mikey V. I'm the big ticket, and we'll see you folks next week.